everybody, it's Vicki. Um, I am going to do a live or semi-live unboxing. Uh, I ordered a bunch of vintage items from one of the viewers and one of our members of our boss group, Lori Knowles. And as some of you know, I sell primarily vintage and women's vintage clothing and I'm always looking to buy quality vintage items. And uh, Lori had reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in purchasing some of her uh, overstock. So, I have no idea what's in these boxes. She sent me a few uh, photos and a couple of short videos, and I said, yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks like the kind of stuff I'd buy. So we worked out uh, some pricing, and in four short days, it arrived on my doorstep. So you might be seeing my t-shirt here. Uh, we're just a week out from our Boss Reseller Remix, so uh, still riding the high from that. If you missed out this week, uh, I hope you join us next year. Uh, see the video that premiered uh, the week before this one, if you want to see what it was about. Uh, we had a great week. My voice is still raspy. It's getting over a little bit of a head cold. Uh, we had a lot of people, and my immune system was not used to all those people and all that hugging. Uh, anyway, well worth it. So, without any more delays, I'm just going to get into these boxes. I haven't even opened them yet, so uh, hopefully this part doesn't take too long, because Lori is a good taper. Uh, I probably should have prepped this, sorry. Um, <clears throat> Bear with me a second. And you know what? Maybe I'll do the big box first and go from there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Do you want to call Wade and ask if you can borrow his knife? Yeah, Wade, where's your knife? He doesn't know. No, he doesn't even carry one. He's even worse than I am. <clears throat> By the way, in this house, I open the boxes. Generally speaking, but right now she's uh, holding the camera, so I don't get the box opening skills. We don't want to ruin my nails, you know. <clears throat> so I've got two big boxes. I think there's like 50 items here, so I'm gonna try to go through them as quickly as possible. I don't want to do a two hour video or anything, but I'm gonna quickly see what these things are and uh, talk about them a little bit. And she just kind of put a lot of the stuff in the big box here. We got some, I see some bright colors. Love that. All right, so let's dive in. Let's see. So this first item is just kind of a, oh, it's a Sears, just kind of like a drop waist. Actually, it's a high waist, kind of like a house dress kind of thing. Um, this actually has some hemming that someone did, maybe a, uh, and it may actually have some vintage tissues in the pocket. I feel something in the pocket, so that's always fun. Um, this definitely looks like an 80s print of some sort. So maybe like kind of like a pullover house dress type of thing that someone would have worn around the house. Um, cool print. I'm gonna see about these stitches. Might be something I would take down so it would be the full length. Uh, it's just Carnegie Court. It's a brand from Sears, made in the USA. This is probably a something I would list for maybe $30 or so. Another one, another type of house coat duster type of thing with a zipper in the front. Uh, small, this is for Smart Time, made in the USA, with the union label. This is also kind of an 80s, maybe late 70s, early 80s, plastic zipper. This actually has a little bit of an, like an ethnic vibe in the patterning, which is kind of embroidered. So this is kind of fun. Um, I like this one. I'll probably list this one closer to the $40 range. Let's see here. Another one here. There's a couple stains on this, but this is a fun fabric. Uh, this looks to be homemade, uh, which is never a deterrent when you're talking about vintage clothing. It was very, very common for people to make their own clothing up through probably the 70s and into the early 80s until it became cost prohibitive and uh, ready-made clothing was a lot cheaper than actually making it yourself. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely handmade. Uh, this has got a little bit of a Hawaiian vibe to it, but it's basically just the same thing, just kind of a, a frock, just a, a shift dress of sorts in a pretty Hawaiian fabric. I would put this around the 70s, early 80s as well. It's not super well made, uh, it just has a, like a notch for the neck area. So um, 
Fun fabric, not super well made. Again, probably 30s-ish. I'll see if I can get the $30-ish. Let's see if I can get the staining out of it. This type of stuff I love, quilted, <clears throat> vintage quilted polyester stuff, fun. So this is definitely like a 70s, maybe even early 80s vibe. Love this. Also like a nightgown, robe, house coat, cover up type of thing. You'd put this on after you get out of the bath. It's satin trimmed, quilted with like gold fabric threading going through it. It's absolutely hideous and fantastic at the same time. Uh, it's definitely got a little bit of wear to it, so whoever owned it loved it. These are probably not the original buttons, but they are uh, uniform. Uh, they may have been original, but I doubt it. They don't look like they are. It has some pockets. This will probably be another $30, $40 item. Let's see. What else? What else we have? Oh, here we go. Another smock house coat uh kind of like a smock dress type of thing someone would wear around the house in the 70s early 80s this is actually more 70s metal zipper front has some staining again a lot of these things i'll be able to treat this is maybe even 60s this might be as uh even 60s here uh red piping with a little bow in the front this is fun uh it's got a little pocket a little contrast the you know the pattern going in the other way uh definitely handmade but a really cute like almost a ditzy print but not quite it does again have some staining on the front or this yeah staining on the front i think i can treat this this is just a cotton fabric um this is very cute i'll probably again list this 30 40 dollar range this is great uh bread and butter type of vintage Feel some terry cloth here. So this is just a cute little terry cloth, kind of like a cover up, cover up dress. Um, no brand, but it's not homemade. It's a, it's a size large, but this is very, very 70s, 80s. Love it. Just a little terry cloth. It's got a little peephole. This would be like a cover up dress. Uh, you know, you wear it over a bathing suit, wear it in the summertime. Again, this has a couple of stains on it as well. I'm not afraid of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to spray spray it and work it into it with work the uh, LA Awesome stuff that we sell. Uh, that, not that we sell, that we talk about, and we have a link to it in our Amazon store. You can get it at the dollar store. If you don't have it uh, at the dollar store near you, we definitely have a link to it. You can purchase it through Amazon, have it shipped to you. But I just spray it on and I work it into the fibers with a toothbrush. And I let it sit for a couple of hours and I throw it into the washing machine, usually with a color catcher in case anything uh, runs. And that's pretty much how I treat almost everything. Works pretty well. Older fabrics, especially polyester, nylon, cotton, uh, they pretty much take any kind of abuse and staining comes out really well. This is super cute. I can already tell. More terry cloth. Also a cover up. Very 80s, late 70s, 80s cover up with kind of an elastic neck here. Uh, might have been homemade, maybe not. There's no tags, but that doesn't matter. Uh, look at this cute little, like, mother-son, maybe. I don't know, boy and girl, little dolphins, little white dolphins. Very cute. Beach cover-up in a terry cloth. Again, $30, $40 range. I see some loud fabric. I love this. Give me some of this loud stuff. This is... Definitely well loved because this is kind of a like a flannel, the type of stuff that you'd wear in like a like flannel PJs, and it's a little bit nubby uh, from being washed a lot. Not a massive deterrent. You can see like the back. It's it's like a polyester. It's almost nylon here, but nubby on the front. Um, is nubby a keyword you would use? No, I wouldn't. It's just my descriptor <laughs> to try and tell people when I'm talking about it, what I'm you know what I mean by it. Uh, but this is kind of just a, a basic, also cover-up, house coat, um, duster, definitely 70s, big wide collar here. Um, it's not lined, but you see this a lot around the neckline, like a partial lining where they will line the collar. Uh, matching zipper front. These are on the smaller side, most of these things. This could be a cover-up. It has pockets. It could be a robe. It could be a house coat. Not quite a dress. This is definitely more along the lines of casual, like home leisure wear, 
more because of the fabric than the style. If this were in a different type of fabric, it would definitely be more of a dress uh, because the style is kind of a versatile style. Let's see. Uh, this is definitely a robe here. Pink robe, big, uh, big buttons. This one is going to be more of a 60s, 60s, 70s vibe to it with like a half sleeve. I would say three quarter, but more of a half sleeve. No tags, but it has a cute little ribbon accent at the neck. So this is kind of that Pepto-Bismol pink color. Most of these things are pretty small, as a lot of vintage clothing is. When you find the uh, clothing in vintage that is a, you know, more of our average clothing sizes for today, you're going to sell it a little bit better. You're going to want to build higher prices on it. Smaller clothing sizes in vintage is a lot more common. There's a lot of it around. Um, and when you find something in a larger size, say something would fit me, um, I'm a curvy woman, uh, it's harder to find. So you can command a higher price. Let's see. So far, so good. I like everything. You did good, Lori. Oh, we got some fun hideous polyesterness. I don't know what it is. Oh my goodness, this is awful and fantastic. Look at this collar. Okay, so this is a pullover. Uh, no tag, but heavily printed, kind of a, like just a disco 70s, hideous. What is that, monk core? Polyester. What is, is that, it? Is that monk core? Are those monks on there? Is that <laughs> monk monks, leisure that wear? Monk, monk leisure wear. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah, the uglier, the better. Yeah, this is pretty fantastic. Uh, this also has a little bit of staining, but it's not even like you'd know because this pattern is so bold. Uh, again, polyester. This is polyester, definitely polyester. Polyester is very, very forgiving. I am willing to bet that I'll be able to get most of these stains out with very easily being, uh, being treated. Uh, this has a couple of pills, but I'm gonna treat this and then I will sweater shave it here and I bet it's gonna come out looking pretty great. I, I'm gonna list this one pretty high. This is probably a $75 shirt. I should probably wear that. No, you should not. No, never. Let's see here. Uh, I. This is not super old. This is more like a, just like a career wear, maybe like 90s. Just kind of a petite, nothing special. Um, unless this has the other piece to it, I probably won't list this one at all. Um, oh wait, I found more, more, monk wear. Wait, we could go matching. We could. Come on, come I can't on. believe you're the one suggesting it. Come on. Let's do it. Matching there monk wear. Uh, I actually like the purple one even better. The purple is in much better condition. Uh, so again, like 75 bucks a piece, I would say for those. Uh, let's see. Oh, more 70s. <clears throat> this is just a rib knit shirt with uh, some polyester sleeves. And again, 70s, look at this big wide collar, this big wide spread collar with the points on it. Definitely 70s. It's not homemade, it did have a tag. It's been cut. Again, that doesn't matter, doesn't make a difference at all. This does have a little bit of fading in the underarm and a little bit of a seam. Uh, needs, a little, needs a little restitch right there. You can see the fading, it's a little more brown than black and that's just probably from deodorant or whatever. Um, it's like a 30, $30 shirt, I think. It's pretty fun. I like that. You can tell me if it's getting too long. I mean, we're not even halfway through this first box yet. We're 14 minutes in. Oh, goodness. All right. I'll at least get through the first box, guys. <clears throat> this is homemade. Uh, this is probably 60s. It's got a little bit of a peplum feel to it, but it's not. It's actually just a notch. What is peplum? Peplum is when, if this were at the waist. So see, this is a... A flared sleeve, so it's fitted with a flared sleeve, and it's like a three-quarter sleeve. It's pretty fun. So this is 60s, but if this were a fitted flare at a, at the waist that flares out like that, that's a peplum. So it looks like it should be that on the jacket, but it's not. It's just a notched side. But this is a very 60s-looking pattern. I think this is going to look fantastic on a mannequin. Sometimes it's hard to see how good these things are going to look until you get it on a mannequin. 
uh, and it has some shape under it. But this is great fabric and great pattern. And these sleeves are fun. These big, like, it's like a bell bottom for our sleeve. It's pretty cool. I like these a lot. That's fun. This is going to be like $50, $60 blouse. And then this blouse is a little tiny, I don't know, pineapples maybe? Just like a novelty blouse. I love that kind of stuff. These sell very well for me. Um, this has got some age to it. This might be 60s-ish. Um, uh, maybe even, yeah, 60s or 70s. It definitely has some age to it. No, no tags, but they were there at one point. This is a women's blouse. A um, couple spots I'll work on. It's got a pointed pocket, so it's even got a little bit of a Western flair to it, but there's no yoke in the back. And by yoke, I mean this thing on the back that will sometimes point down. There's a single yoke or a double yoke that gives it a little bit of a Western flair or like a cowboy cut. But uh, this has some staining I'll try to treat. This is a cotton, so it may or may not work. But it has these little red pineapple, kind of a novelty print. Very cute. This type of novelty print uh, blouses are very popular right now. And I sell them for about $40 on pretty much all platforms. This is missing the um, buttons for the sleeves, but it's just a plain white button, so they're pretty easy to, to replace. Some good stuff. All right. Whoa, this one's super 60s. Very mod, boho, uh, mini dress. This is definitely a dress. People will think this is a, a blouse. It's not a blouse. It's a mini dress. Uh, this would be worn with like go-go boots. Um, very high boots, thigh high boots or knee high boots. It has kind of a, uh, a puffy sleeve with with this band, it's kind of a, like a little tribal uh, band around it. And the banding on the top, very 60s, polyester, fantastic, I love this. Needs a little bit of spot cleaning, but this would be like a $75 dress. And another one, similar, this one has a tag in it, it's a hit, division of hit fashions. Uh, also, a little mini dress. This one needs a little bit of stitch work, but again, all the buttons are there. Little 60s mini dress, mod, kind of boho, hippie. Whenever you see this type of like, um, kind of like trim, it's gonna give you a little bit of a hippie feel to it. a cute blouse right here very pretty vintage blouse can you hold it up i can thank you a little pretty swirl and this has got a puckered smocked front that's called smocking it's got that little stretch there which was very popular in the 70s this is handmade it's not bad it's not badly done uh but it's definitely handmade uh Maybe a $30 blouse, $30 or $40 blouse. It's all going to depend on how this lays on a mannequin. Looking at it, it looks okay, but I'm not sure how that smocking is going to translate on a mannequin. It's a satiny material. It's polyester, but it kind of feels a little satiny. I feel more polyester. Okay. Oh, that's a collar. Whew. All right. So this is a very, very 60s, 70s. Wide collar, polyester type knit top. Let's see, I'm gonna tuck that in so you can see it. But look at how wide that collar is. Okay, it's navy blue. And then this is a, <clears throat> a vest that may or may not have gone with the set. Just a basic vintage navy blue vest. All right, let's see, one more big bag in here. And I think I might wrap it up at the end of this box and save the other box for maybe Sunday's show. Uh, let's see. Got another house coat type of thing. Just a little vintage, 80s-ish house coat. Purple with some tulips on it. 
Again, bread and butter stuff, 30, 30 bucks or so. I don't know if anybody's keeping a running tally, but um, so far everything is saleable except for one thing. Even the ones that need some work I think will be saleable even if I can't fix them to perfection. Uh, we've got another house coat, vintage-ish, 80s, not super old. But again, these things always sell, bread and butter. All right, so more polyester, yay! Polyester dress, big wide collar, 70s polyester dress, just a basic button front dress, a little sheer polyester, very reminiscent of the dresses in the 90s and that are coming back today. The main difference with these is the fabric, which is polyester in the 90s. It was more of that creepy nylon fabric and these huge wide collars. But the silhouette of the dress is the same. This silhouette is popular now, was popular in the 90s, and is popular in the 70s. So fashion is cyclical. This print would be popular now, popular in the 90s, popular in the 70s. And this one is, this is definitely a house coat type of thing. This is a brand, kind of like a Moomoo. They still make them now. Uh, some, some of them look like Hawaiian, some of them don't. This one definitely looks Hawaiian. It's just basic Hawaiian dress, or moo moo, or caftan, or whatever you want to call it. All of those things will sell it. So here's this one in blue. This would be like a little $40 dress. Cute. Not super old, that one's like 80s. And got another one right here. Also, I would consider this a moo moo. The teal with the purple, very popular in the 80s and the 90s. This is a very 80s look. And it's got the little applique on the shoulders. No tag on this, but again, this is not homemade, but this would be, I would call this a Hawaiian moo based on the length, and then it's got the flounce skirt at the end. This is just a basic, basic house dress. Handmade, Hawaiian, not Hawaiian, sorry, handmade in, a, in like a rainbow cotton fabric. I feel things in the pockets, probably ancient tissues, maybe a peppermint candy, depending on the ancient tissues. Uh, let's see, fun fabric here. Oh, I like this one. So this is probably the nicest dress as far as like style that I've seen. Um, I like everything, but this one is probably the most, the fanciest, I guess. A lot of these have been casual. Um, this is a nicer type of party dress in a really pretty brown and orange uh, swirl fabric. This is a, <clears throat> has a belt with it and everything. Metal zipper in the back, which indicates it's older. This is what I mean by a metal zipper. It's very nicely made and it has the little bow in the back. So this one I'm gonna say is 60s, based on what I'm seeing here with the metal zipper and the metal hook and eye and that little bow in the back. The style is kind of timeless, but this is, I'm gonna say, a 60s dress. It's really pretty. This is probably my favorite, personally. Uh, and when that is steamed up, it's gonna look fantastic on a mannequin. So I would probably list this one around $100. Let's see. This is super cute too. <clears throat> Let's see. This one is a just a polyester dress, but in a very cute fabric. So it has a rear zip and a little bit of a like a ruffly neckline with an empire waist. Kind of a mini dress, very 60s, 70s, very cute. This would be another one, about $69, $79. And again, as you guys notice, I don't look up comps. I just put a price on it that I think it's worth. Vintage clothing, you kind of have to get a feel for it because you're not going to find a comp on vintage clothing. You kind of just have to go with the flow, go with your feel. Um, let's see. Here's another one with a metal zipper. Really cute little purple flowers. Um, this is homemade. I can tell by the stitching it's a little sloppy. Uh, but it's a cute dress. 
Again, I think it'll look cute on a mannequin. It's very tiny, so this is probably for like a teenager's type of clothing or a very young woman's clothing. Uh, I would say this is 60s. It's starting to get into the bigger collar, but it's not a pointed collar, it's still a rounded collar. So I'm gonna say this is probably 60s. It's going from Peter Pan collar, which is the round short collar, to a pointy wider collar, and it's kind of somewhere in between. So I'm gonna say this is late 60s, is my guess uh, on that. And I'm just gonna do just a couple of more, and then I'll let you guys go. This is a fun, loud, obnoxious 80s fabric on a little house dress. Something you'd wear around the house, wear around the pool, maybe a cover up. It's a little sheer, so I'm gonna say this one's probably closer to a cover up, but it's super bright and fun. No brand, could be homemade. Uh, very small, you can tell me it's very narrow at the top. Um, but yeah, like a 30, 30, $40 thing. This one's probably the largest item that I've seen here so far. This is not very old. This is Izod. That's why it's a size 14. This is current. That's not old at all, actually. Uh, it needs a little bit of cleaning. It's just a fun pattern. I would, I would list this if there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I'll list that. It's kind of got a little bit of a, um, like Indian, you know, Middle Eastern Indian uh, vibe to it. How much will you list it for? Maybe $30 or so. It's Izod, it's not a very expensive brand, but that's a cute pattern. And I'm gonna wrap this up, guys. I'm just gonna do, let me just do two more. This one because, holy heck, I love this fabric. So this is bark cloth. It's a very thick bark cloth. Don't mind our washing machine, guys. I know, sorry, you can hear the washing machine in the background. This is bark cloth and it is in a really fun, let me get close to over texture. Yeah, you can see the texture. It's really thick. It's cotton. Bark cloth is cotton. It's 100% cotton, but it is a thick fabric that has uh, a lot of texture. And you find it a lot in Hawaiian type clothing. This is backed with cotton. This is definitely handmade. It's actually unfinished in some spots. Look at how it's not very well made, but it's a fantastic fabric. Um, great drop waist dress. Metal zipper in the back. Very 60s, fun. It's got a little uh, little box pleats in the front, little bow accent. I love this. If uh, we can trim up some, some of the messy threading on this, this is in like a, you know, probably a $75 to $100 dress. And I'll do one more here. This is also not very old. I would say this is probably 90s. So I guess vintage 90s, Y2K-ish. But it fits with the other stuff. This is a heavy linen. This is just Harvey Bernard, not a, used to be a designer, then kind of sold out and went to like, um, you know, TJ Maxx and Marshalls and that kind of crap. Uh, but it's a very heavy linen dress, linen shift dress with a leather um, fabric trim around the neck. So it's kind of a, it's a nice dress. So even though it's not an expensive brand, I kind of like the look and I, I would definitely list this in the $30, $40 range. So that, uh, let's see, we'll real quick and see if there's anything super fun I should show. Oh wait, I see something. Oh wait, wait, wait. All right, I'm gonna end this with a bang, guys, because look at this thing. Holy crap, look at this dress. Okay, I couldn't leave you with Harvey Bernard, right? Look at this thing. This is fantastic. So look at all this glitter. You just got real June Carter there. Look at this glitter. <laughs> this border print. This is very kind of like an ethnic looking print, almost like a Mayan print or a Peruvian print, but definitely some type of ethnic print with the um, with all the glitter accent. Very 70s. It's polyester. Has a mock neck. It zips in the back with a metal zipper. It is lined, it's very nicely made. This is, I don't think this one's handmade. Uh, I would not be surprised to find a designer tag in here somewhere. Uh, and it has a matching belt. This is fantastic. So this is one that I will list high. This is one that I'm probably gonna list closer to 200 just because it's really nicely made and it's a fantastic fabric. And this type of print is very hot right now. 
This is one that will definitely sell, most definitely will sell on either Etsy or Thrilling. Uh, and I'm gonna put this up pretty high, about $200. So, so far, this is my favorite piece. Very Day of the Dead right now, right? If I could get this up fast enough, it's too late now, we're two days away from Halloween. But this would be a very uh, Day of the Dead type of dress that would look fantastic. I say you post it for 300. I feel like this is one you'll post for 200 and sell it in, in 30 minutes and then regret. It's possible, I may, I've done that before. But anyway, so it's been a long time since I've done a vintage haul video, and uh, thank you, Lori, for sending me some sweet vintage for, uh, for to be able to do that. Oh, wait, I found a tag. Hold on. Hold, please. I knew it wasn't handmade. Uh, nope, just the, just the order tag. No brands. Sorry, guys. Sorry. You never Sorry know. Sorry about it. Uh, but anyway... Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like me to do more of these videos, I knew I, I know I always get a lot of comments on these. I promise I will do them. When I get to do unboxings like this is when I get a chance to actually do this, not just when I pick up a bunch of stuff you know, every week. So vintage unboxings are awesome. If you have bunches of vintage that you wanna get rid of, hit me up. Uh, I'm always willing to make a deal. I love finding cool stuff and rescuing it and listing it. So. Thanks for watching. Leave some comments. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And Katie and I will see you on Sunday together.